Today will be no different. After ending 26 years of employment, my guest followed her passion, her passionate hobby, which is internet radio. You guys are like, wow, never would have guessed that. I would not have guessed that either. Creating a phenomenal podcast where she has candid conversations with successful reinvented women. She aptly calls it her business, her voice, her conversation. She's appeared in Marketing Insiders, Influential Leaders in Marketing, and The Huffington Post. And we are here today to have a fireside chat right now. Margot Lovett is here with us today. Welcome. Hey, Inch. Thank you for having me. Hey, so you have an interesting story and in and, and life. Um, you spent 26 years in a business and then decided, hey, I want to do something else. And a lot of people will look at, uh, well, what's wrong with that? But you have to tell them how old you were when you got started with this new passionate hobby of yours. Finch, I was 61 years old when I quit that job. It became a job after 26 years. And I went back to what I really love, that hobby of podcasting. I had, mm. I was smitten. I had to do it. So, so talk to us about, because, you know, there's a number of people today. There's some people that will watch this or hear this right now and saying, well, I'm on a job. I don't love it, but it pays the bills. So what? In that time period of those 26 years, at what time did you say, you know what, this is not really what I feel like my life's passionate work is going to be, and I want to do something else. At what point in your life did that occur? Oh, wow. I would say probably by the time I turned, I had done podcasting as a hobby for a couple of years, and I never... I never could get into the corporate groove, mm -hmm. really. I never, I always felt like it was not my place, but, you know, paid for the house, got mm -hmm. the mortgage, the car, you know, the kids, you do all of that. But something happened at year 26 and mm -hmm. it, it rocked my soul and Finch, I couldn't stay any longer. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at 26 years and I'm, I'm thinking, okay, I'm probably going to work a couple of more years. Mm -hmm. I'm socked away money in my 401k yeah. cuz I'm plotting my way and thinking, "Oh, I love this podcasting. I'm going to turn it into a business." But I was going to wait a while. Uh, but after that incident happened, I looked around one day and I thought, "You know, you can't do it anymore." So uh, I quit. I walked away. I quit, took a year off, and once I got my voice back, I said, "Yeah, it's time to get a mentor. Let's get back to podcasting." And the rest is history. Now, I got a couple more questions that come from that that one answer you just gave me because there's somebody sitting at home or sitting at their desk right now at a job that they hate. And they're saying, Oh, well, she's probably, she can probably do that. She came from a wealthy family or she had a, a lot of stuff stored up in a nest egg or she was, she's a silver spoon kid. What would you say to that? Not so. I am from the West End in a small town in Rockford, Illinois. <laughs> My parents worked hard for everything they had and, and achieved. And um, I come from a working class family, mm -hmm. but I always had the the chutzpah of the entrepreneurs on my mama's side mm. of the family. And I just never gave it a chance to come out. But after I looked at Brown and I saw what was happening to me, I said, I better lean back on what's in my jeans. <laughs> and you know, when things, when it gets to flood stage, you find a way to tap into what's right for you. And I'm Christian. And I prayed, even though I didn't ask God, Lord, is it time for me to cheat, clean, leave this job? Uh, but I did pray and say, Lord, show me how to get started again. Mm -hmm. How do I make the turn this into a business? So no, no silver spoon, but a whole lot of grit, gumption and coming from uh, leaning in on my genes and my faith. So so did you quit cold turkey? Like, did you give them that take this job and shove it approach or was it a plan in place? Maybe it was take this job and shove it. <laughs> I, felt like, bitch, I looked around and I felt like they had done that to me. They literally gave me the finger. That's uh. my interpretation. And I will never walk away from that. You know, no <laughs> one can take that. So after 26 years, you want to do, do a sister like that. Mm. Okay. 
I had to look out for my blood pressure was through the roof. My I, fish, I, I tell anybody, honey, I was going to a therapist. They had done a job, J O B, on me on that job. So it was you or me, and I had to save myself, you know. You like, hey, it's it's either you and me, and it ain't gonna be me. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah. y'all put me through hell for four months, four months, no longer. If oh I stayed, goodness. it would have been on me. You know, I would have no one to uh, I put no blame on anyone except mm. for myself. Now, now, a lot of times we hear, especially in this last year, some change uh, uh, due to the pandemic. We've heard a lot of people talk about entrepreneurship and you should start your own business you should do this but that's a host of people that's like i don't know how or where to start and they just may not be cut out for that what advice would you give to those people i would say get yourself a, a mentor most definitely i know coaches have a bad name and everybody is a coach and that type of thing but surely there is someone and i'm not talking about your brother pook your cousin pookie or even your grandfather there's somebody who can help you understand, first of all, are you cut out for this? Uh -huh. Because it is not for the faint of heart. Even podcasting, Finch, wouldn't you say? Podcasting is not for the faint of heart. Well, it's no, a, it's not. <laughs> no. But if you are to do it, find somebody who's doing it consistently. Mm -hmm. uh, check out their digital footprint and their their. Where are, what are they doing in the world? Did they do what their last venture? Was it two years ago, last year ago? Who's on, who they're on the lips of who, you know, mm. you want to vet that person because everybody ain't who they say they are, you know, mm. and that website, uh, hmm, anybody can put on a face, a mask. They can be anybody they want to be on the internet. You want to find your person. Yeah, the internet and social media is definitely one of those places where you can go play dress up and you can become and be anybody you envision of being without actually having to do any work to actually be the person yeah. that you're presenting. So, yeah, I, I, I understand that part. Um, but so getting started, because I always look at things from a more logical standpoint, you know, because as you said, Coaches have a bad name, and it's rightfully so because they've earned it. Some of them have earned the name that they have because they are manipulative. They are co coercing people because they're like preachers. They just want your money. So they will say whatever they need to say to get you to give to, to come out for your money. But someone who's actually serious about uh, being an entrepreneur and saying, I don't even know the first place to get started. Yeah, you guys talking about get a mentor, but who, where am I find one of those at? You know, because they're just not in the in the know. So, what would be a basic, uh, let's say, a basic beginner's kit for anybody that may not have the tools or wherewithal? Because everybody don't have your brain, Margot. Everybody don't have it. Well, I tell you, Finch, where you can go, and they're as they say, bipartisan. It's all about business. I would go to the Small Business Administration. I think it's the yep. SBA yep. online. They're not, you know, they, there's, they have skin in the game, but it's not to buy from me, buy from me, buy from me. They're going to give it to you straight. And from that point on, there are mentors, coaches, classes, build your business plan from, from that one foundation right. because it all begins with a foundation. Same thing for a podcaster. I know, and I don't want to drop any names, but I know some people really and truly, I know some people drop that, their names, <laughs> brother Bedford. I'm going <laughs> to drop it hard because that brother, I'm going to tell you, it's not about the money. It's uh -huh. all about letting, especially black folks, us getting our voices out there. And when you build your podcast through him, which is what, how I learned, it's rock solid. If you take it to a network, it's not going to fail you. You pull away and you do your own thing. It's going to still be ready for you for monetization. You can have people like Finch on your podcast and you won't collapse. You can sell it. That's, that's the kind of person that you want to get with someone whose name rolls off of someone's lips. Uh, with confidence okay. and they put their name out there. Yeah. She put her name with brother Bedford. You doggone right. Skippy. I did. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so tell us about uh, your reinvention conversations that you have with women all across the country. Uh, what inspired you to say, you know what, out of all the things I want to talk about, this is something I find dear. And, and why was that necessary for you? 
It was necessary because Finch, when I came out of corporate, I I knew that I couldn't return to the music show that mm-hmm. I had been doing. Right. I, that was in back of me. So what I was faced with right now, I knew other women were faced with because what happened to me, I knew it was going on with some other women and eventually they were going to have to bail out. So I couldn't find up under one umbrella, how do I reinvent myself? How do I become a podcaster? How do I become Mm -hmm. an author, a best-selling author? How do I become an entrepreneur? I wanted it all up under one umbrella. I couldn't find it. So I built that. In 2017, this same person that helped me build the podcast, retool it, he helped me become a, put all of that up under one umbrella. And that's my mission. That's my mantra. If I did it, you can also. I don't care if you're 70 years old. Mm. And you know what, Finch, something that really ignites me is an article that I wrote, that I read. There are over mm, about a million boomer women that had to take early retirement through this pandemic. And you know what, when you take money out of your 401k like that, Mm -hmm. that has an impact. So you don't have time to sit around and hunt and peck and hope that you can find a way to reinvent yourself. You need to be connected with somebody, been there, done that, who's very transparent, will spill the tea, anything else, and has connections to help you along the way. So that reinforced what my mission and the show is all about. And I'm here for the, I'm here for women. I'll tell you the dirty low down truth about it. Everybody should not be a podcaster. Everybody should not be a entrepreneur, mm-hmm. but you have to have something that you can fall back on because corporations are not your friend necessarily. They're not supposed to be. Don't expect them to be. I, I think people have an unrealistic expectation. And mm-hmm. in some regards, uh, a, Huge form of entitlement when it comes to people and entities. Like when you go to a job, ladies and gentlemen, they are paying you for your services. Whatever you are hired to do, that's what that's what you should expect from them. You should not expect respect. You should not expect loyalty. Uh, all you should expect is a paycheck from them. Now, it is it would be mutually beneficial if they respected you, but that's not a requirement for them because they don't have to respect you. They don't have to befriend you. They expect you to do a work that they're paying you to do. That's it. And I think sometimes we we get lost in what the expectation should be because we feel entitled to things that just, just doesn't come with the territory, especially with people and and co- companies that, that we work for. Now- well- can I add something to that? Of I found there are handbooks and there are, uh, you know, there are things written up in that everyone has to sign off to. Mm-hmm. Look at the yearly videos that are about harassment re- and it comes respect and how we treat each other and we reinforce the culture. That's fine and that's well if it's reinforced, if it's right. for everybody. And oftentimes, according to someone else's interpretation, that is not your, the employee's interpretation, it could go either way for you. And that's where we run into problems. That's why I tell people, you better have that side hustle. You better trust in yourself. Listen to that. Go. You had better cultivate yourself because Finch, you know, you read the headlines, you look at what's going on, anything liable to happen these days. Liable. That, that's, yeah. a, that's a great term to use. So so at what age did you get started with uh, this this great venture that you've been on these last few years? I was 61 years old when I created her business, her voice, her conversations. I was in my 50s mm-hmm. when I went to Hollywood and learned how to do terrestrial radio and Internet radio. I think it was my gifting is my calling. You know? Margo, I'm not going to keep talking to you if you're going to start lying. <laughs> Man. 61? <laughs> come on 61. now. 61. Not afraid of the technology because the industry that I come from, it was always evolving. We had to learn new things. So, you know, that helped uh, in a great way. But 61. Yeah. Wow. Because, you, you know, you hear these stories of a woman or a man losing their job in their old age and having to reinvent or recreate themselves and ended up, horror story, ended up at Starbucks or Walmart uh, making little to nothing. Um, Would you say, because you are someone who got started with what you're doing now at 61, 
is it uh, more so about the individual not understanding their abilities uh, or not believing in themselves? Or is it about uh, getting started at a late age? Because I believe you can do whatever you you think about or desire to do if you put in the, the work and effort and, and just simple learning. That's I mean, that's just my thought process. What do you think? I say that you have to do that inside work while you are mm. employed. Know who you are and give yourself permission to, as uh, Oleg Lowheed says, operate in the gray. Mm. Understand that there's no black, there's no white. It's just your perception. What is your perception of yourself? And give yourself permission to dwell there because one thing about it, you are going to change. One day you are not going to be there. You are mm. going to have to face yourself in the mirror. And, and it's best when you understand your strengths, your fears, your weaknesses. So then you can reach out for the correct person to help you reinvent yourself. Yeah. That's the way I see it. Now, now have you have you seen, because you, you spoke about someone who helped you in the beginning. Uh, how, how did that come about for you? Are you like one of those kind of people who don't mind talking to strangers and or and or resourceful where you know how to look up stuff to find people. I'm resourceful, but I tell you along the way, I've been talking to people about I'm a podcaster. I'm a podcaster. I got this music show. So everybody knew pretty much what I was doing. But when I fell off the grid, people said, what happened to Margo? So when I resurfaced, I reached out to someone who's pretty well known here in, in L.A. County, and she referred me to Brother Bedford. She has uh -huh. the utmost respect, yeah, by way of referral. But even in spite of that, I went to St. George's County, Virginia, and I listened to this gentleman speak. And I thought, wow, the price tag is kind of high. Let me go home and think about this. But after a, you know, after a month, we connected and we had a conversation. The rest is history. So you have to be willing to invest in yourself and, and see yourself working with that person. And they see themselves working with you also. Are you teachable? First of all, mm. are you coachable? Because so many of us, I was such and such and such <laughs> and such at this company and you don't know who I am. <laughs> well, you were that over there, but you over here and you don't know the heck what you're talking about or how yeah. to get started or what to do. You that know? That is true. You know, you're saying a couple of things here. Now, one, I got to say, you in Los Angeles? Yeah, Los Angeles County. I could have sworn they told me you was on the East Coast. <laughs> uh, most of my listeners are on the East Coast. It's oh. ironic. I feel like I'm from the East Coast. I'm at home when I'm in D.C. I really am. I'm from the Midwest, but I feel at home back East. Okay. Like, I mean, seriously, I was like, OK, she's on the East Coast. Uh, I, somebody got their, their lines mixed up because they did tell me you was on the East Coast because we're, we're in Los Angeles. So, yeah, I didn't know that. I didn't know you was here. <laughs> That's funny. I didn't know you was here. Uh, Hello, neighbor. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Hilarious, man. It's crazy. Oh, OK. So, so. Oh. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. That, that that so threw me off when you said LA County. I was like, wait a minute, she couldn't know that unless she lived here. But when when you're talking about relationships and, and building, um, because see, I went through a period just like yourself where I fell off the grid. I spent years in the industry, traveling across the country, speaking, leading campaigns, television shows, and then I just disappeared for eight, nine years. <laughs> no, I think it was 10, longer than that. And, and then recent resurfaced in, I think, 2018. So when you're thinking about reinventing yourself, most people don't even look at it as a reinvention because they have always equated who they are to what they do, where they live, what they have. And when all those things have disappeared, they feel lost in who they are as people because we really never take the time to identify who we are. You don't believe me, ladies and gentlemen? Ask somebody, well, who are you? And listen to what they say about themselves, because that tells you what they think about themselves. Do you agree with that? I certainly do. 26 years, I was that company. Mm. Uh, at my, I mean, my friends came from that company. Our conversations, we'd talk about dinner or food or uh, Queen Sugar or whatever. Well, Queen Sugar wasn't out then, but or something. But it, we always came back to the company. It was always mm. company talk. And that's a shame because we are more 
and yes. what we do, what we have, what mm-hmm. we drive. We are so much more. We cheat ourselves, you know? Yeah, we, we actually do. We, we do a lot of cheating when it comes to ourselves because we grew up believing that you go to college, you get mm-hmm. a job, and that identifies who you are with society. And unfortunately, it's not about who you are. That's why you can have someone say, well, I did so and so. They always leave with accolades about what they've accomplished, not mm-hmm. realizing that what you were and what you are may not be the same thing. So if you're in a time period of reinventing yourself or having to, because a host of people, if we're being honest, have had to reinvent themselves in the last year and a half because life as we knew it disappeared overnight. So when you start looking at your accomplishments, like I never hinge my right now on what I've accomplished many years ago, because for one, it's irrelevant. It doesn't even it doesn't matter. And I'm not going to say it's irrelevant, period. It doesn't matter in the sense of what I want to do now, who I am now, and where I want to go at this junction in life, because nobody cares about what you did 10, 15 years ago. They don't even remember it, if you're being honest. They don't remember at all what you did 10, 15 years ago. And if that is your highlight, like I've had people, uh, include some, some, some associates from high school who are still living in the high school heyday. And it's like, Hey, man, your life could be so much more now. But what have you done since high school? We're talking about 20, 30 years or more for some people years ago that you were in high school. Why do you think so many people are stuck in a time war? I think and I I really, truly believe that time holds a gift for us. Mm. And if we're going to hold on to something, hold on something that validates why we are today and we can build off of it. I always go back to my wonderful experience on Verke Bashani radio. I always refer back to that. That's mm-hmm. a part of my story, a part of my past, mm-hmm. but it's just a catalyst and a snippet. Look at what's going on now and what will go mm-hmm. on. So a lot of people, they, they, I think they lose sight of themselves and it's so easy to lean on what I was, right. what I did. And it's, we, the onus is on building out from that. Right. How many of us do? That takes work. That takes investment. That's scary. Mm-hmm. But we have to do it if we're going to be effective. You know. You definitely have to do it. Now, you have a couple of things that you do. Um, I had a great, I had a, an opportunity to take a look at your website. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to talk about your podcast academy online. Explain to our audience what that is, and if someone is interested, how could they get involved? You know, Finch, I love podcasting so much, and I see the power of it so much. This makes me grin because (laughs) during the pandemic, I really came to understand how us in particular, Black folks, I'll say it, Black Mm -hmm. folks, uh, Boomer women, we have lived long lives and we have bring so much to the table. Why don't we get our voices out there? Own who we are, get our voices out there, become mm. a podcaster. Well, the technology, well, the investment, I don't know how I take all of that away. Mm. And okay. I teach Boomer women in particular, how to create their podcast. Now, it doesn't have to be every day. It can be a capsule podcast. Maybe you link that to your business and you just want to do podcast series or whatever. Mm. Get your foundation built. Fall in love with your why. Connect with Ooh. every part of that podcast. So when Finch and ask you to come on, you're not, uh, but, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and <laughs> somebody else created this for you. No, during the creation process, you are imagining, you are building, you are launching, you are, you understand the, the theory behind your podcast, the, the mechanics of it and the technology of it. So, you know, all parts of that tech of that podcast, just like you build it from the ground up, like a person does building a car, you build your podcast like that Mm -hmm. and you take off like a rocket. That's what I, that's what podcast academy uh, online.com is all about. And we are graduating women Mm -hmm. and men. We are graduating some folks. So 
That's my baby. And I hate my strategist says, don't call it your baby. It is my passion. It is my work. I love it. I really do. What good is it for me to talk about? I reinvented myself when I can't help someone else get their voice out there. Mm. You're not too old. If I can do it at 61, you know, up under the, the, uh, the accountability. Yes, there's coursework and you have to be held accountable. If you bring those two to the table, you can do it. I like the whole idea that it's never too late. And you just said something that I tell people all the time is understanding and learning your why. Yes. That's so vitally important. It's almost like with anything, you know, when you are wallowing in pity or you are bitter or angry mm-hmm. uh, as it comes to an ex, you got to understand why. What is that? Why are you like this? Why do you feel this way? When you discover the why of anything, it helps you. It helps you understand everything that I mean, it's so important. And I think a lot of people don't take the time to discover it and figure out the why of their lives, which is why we oftentimes stay stuck in places, because we don't know why we're here. We don't understand why we feel the way we feel. We don't understand what or why certain things happen or did not happen for us. And. We just stay stuck in what I call quicksand and we're steady sinking because we haven't been able to understand or discover our why. So I uh, I, I actually love that idea and that concept uh, for Thank boomers you. and reinventionists. Um, so when you think about reinventing, you did it at 61 and mm-hmm. you probably helped hundreds of thousands of people do it at various ages. Now, I'm glad you put in the fact that you do. Uh, allow men in because I was going to protest. I was going to stand outside your little office with a little sign and I was going to walk back and forth and with my megaphone. I was going to say some stuff that was not going to be Christian like for you. <laughs> I was going to use some words that, you know, they don't use in churches. Uh, well, they, they say I'm in the back offices in the pastor's study, but they don't say I'm out in front of people. because It's an image thing, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but when you think about secrets or recipes that assist people in reinventing themselves, what is one thing you think about? You have to be true to yourself. Know Ah. yourself. I had to do, Finch, I had to go through, I was working with a therapist while I was still creating this podcast and looking at your why, the Mm -hmm. truth about yourself. There were things that I had to let go of so Mm. that I could bring all of me to the table without hesitation. So Mm. while you're building, you have to make sure that you look at your yourself Mm -hmm. and be true to yourself. Listen to yourself, give yourself permission. And speaking on that, your why, once again, when you are building out your podcast, you have to be aware of your why so that your message doesn't swing with every wind. Uh, This week I'm selling cars or next week I'm selling shampoo. What is your message for the masses? And Stand on it. Build on it. So many of us, we are wishy-washy. We're chasing the dollar. Hell yeah, we are. Excuse me. We all need to get to the dollar. Ah. But we have to make sure that we are true, true to ourselves, true to our audience, so that we can make an impact. At the, with, with consistency, we will. Mm. But be true to yourself. That's where it starts. Do that inside work. Okay, be true to yourself. Do the inside work, um, and uh, man, that's so. That's such a telling thing when you when you're talking about how we operate, um, because I, I, that's true with, with your messaging. You know, with this podcast, you know, I have found myself. We we have a clear objective, uh, but I have found myself, and, and I think this is one of the things that people have to understand about who they are, and and in knowing who you are. I am still finding my footing. Like we are entering, what is this, third, fourth season? Third or fourth season of this show. And I'm learning and growing as a host, as a person, and Mm -hmm. as Finch. You know, I'm growing and I'm realizing, hey, you know what? I boxed myself in because I thought I can only do this one thing or or let me just only talk to people. No. Mm -hmm. So this season I was like, hey, we're going to do something a little different with this show. We're going to do two things. I'm going to have interviews 
Um, but I'm not going to do those live anymore. I'm going to just do those. I'm going to do those recorded because I think it's a better environment for me and my guests. But I'm going to have candid conversations about everyday topics live with people, with everyday people. And they're not going to know what the topic is when, when they come on uh, as, as, as guests on the show. And it's a panelist of a couple of different people at one time. But I'm going to throw it out there because I want to get folks asses off the fence about a host of other uh, topics. So I was like, let's do it like this. And man, it's been wonderful. And so I agree. Understanding who you are as a person, it's, it doesn't matter if you're doing podcasting, you're doing an author, you're starting a, a boutique business, doesn't matter. Knowing your why and who you are as a person will allow you to project that to the masses of people that you're trying to reach. And you know what, Finch, when you know your why, I love that I, you are able to transition and, and pivot and yeah. that overused word, but you can do that and feel good about it. And people will say that's not an extreme for him because they saw that coming probably before you saw it coming. It was probably just a natural, okay, yeah, yeah we're moving on here with Finch. This is how he <laughs> rolls. It was not something so abrupt that they thought, he tripping, <laughs> you know. <laughs> he said he's tripping. Uh, no, he ain't tripping. He, he has a lot of things, and he might trip on a day or two. But <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, what would be uh, tip or secret or recipe number two? Tip and sit. I know it's overused, but I say what you don't know, you don't know. Don't act like you know. Get with somebody <laughs> who does. Fitch, honey, at 61 years old, I didn't have time to be leaning back on what I built at one time. I was out to build that day, that right. time, for mm -hmm. something brand new. How was I going to do that? You know, years had gone on by. Hire somebody to help you with new eyes, new perspective, what's going on in the industry. You know, a new way to find your footing. You have to, you have to hire somebody. Google's not your friend when it's that type of thing. You just have to invest in yourself. That's tip number two. All right. Invest in yourself. I think it's great because if you don't invest in you, you should not expect anybody else to invest Ooh. in you either. You, It has to start with you. I think so many times people are dependent upon other people to do things that they're not willing to do themselves. And we do this, ladies and gentlemen, across the board from relationships, especially. It happens so much in relationships. So much in and I'm talking about romantic relationship, mm -hmm. friendships, any types of relationship. We come in expecting things from other people that we're we're not capable or able to give ourselves. And I think it starts with you. You definitely have to invest in yourself. And like she said, if you don't know, you know, the whole fake it till you make it. No, guys, stop faking it because you're not going to make it faking it. You got to know it in order to grow it. <laughs> yeah. And you have to care to end that investment. Make sure that whoever you are connected to, whoever you have, whoever you are entrusting yourself to, make sure that they are giving you resources. Yeah, they mm -hmm. are giving you connections. Make sure they are giving you all of themselves so that when you are where you're supposed to be, you know what you know, and you're not faking it. And you can move from that point on. See, we, the people would take us to a certain point mm -hmm. and then drop us. But what about the next? There's always yeah. a, a next. So you can't just let people just go, oh, well, you know, $10,000 down the drain. I took you to the mountaintop. Now, uh, how are you going to reach, reach that plateau over there where you really need to go? Mm -hmm. Oh, you could, that's another $10,000 for me to get you over there. See, that part. Yeah. That part. All right. So uh, tip number three. Tip number three, do it. You can't ah. study forever. Now, you hired somebody to go ahead. You've done the inside work. Mm -hmm. You hired somebody to help you. Now, whatever they instructed you to do, do it. Hold yourself accountable and do it. Don't be talking about I'm fitting to, I'm fitting to, I'm going to, I'm going to. And don't be intimidated by what everybody else is doing. If this person did their job, they built you up. Uh, they built you up to be, they built you up so that you are ready mentally and every other way to do that next. So now just do it. Nah, be about it. Just do it. I like that. I have this thing. I always tell people, brace yourself. When you, because oftentimes I think people have this, I'm going to go to, they always go into school and it's nothing <laughs> wrong with learning. 
But when are you going to implement what you've learned? And I feel like you're sit, you're straddling the fence. So I always tell them, get your ass off the fence. Go do it. Like, literally go do it. I'm the kind of person, I have an idea. Sometimes I go through that idea. Most times the idea and the instructions and all the integral parts are in my head. So I, mm -hmm. I, I go through those steps in my head first. Sometimes I write stuff down. A lot of times I don't. But... Anybody that knows me will tell you, when I'm ready to go with an idea, I'm not waiting. I'm launching it. And whatever I don't know, I'm going to learn along the way. And uh, if I don't learn it before, but I'm not waiting. I'm yeah. just not going to wait. And, you know, I'm like this. I'm not waiting on you to do nothing. I'm doing it. I'm jumping. It's like my, um, a good friend of mine once said to me, leap and grow your wings on the way down. Mm-hmm. So I live by that, you know, get your ass off the fence. That's, a, that's how I feel. Yeah. All right, Margo. So if people want to connect with you uh, online, how, how can they do so? I'll keep it real simple. My website, M-A-R-G-O-L-O-V-E-T-T.com, MargoLevette.com. Everything is there. The podcast, podcastacademyonline.com, my book, all about me. Everything's right there. Well, listen. It's been a pleasure having this candid conversation with you. And I think so many people can glean from all the information you gave today. And uh, really, I hope they really connect with you because reinventing yourself at any stage in life can be difficult. It can be it can be overwhelming, yeah. but you can do it. And I'm so glad you did it at 61 and you're showing so many other people across this country that they themselves can do it as well. And it doesn't matter where you start as long as you start, right? That's right. That's right. Thank you, Finch. This has been great. Uh, thank you. Till next time, ladies and gentlemen, get your ass off the fence. Spread the word by leaving a rating and review on iTunes. Thanks for joining us where it always feels good.